What is going on YouTube? June and I'm back here with another Idol Heroes video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Eloise. I have made her my homeowner recently. So ever since then, I've been messing around in Sea Land in Realms Gate, uh, a little bit, I guess, in Ark, do some PvP stuff, but that's not too important. But mostly it's gonna be Tower, Sea Land, and Realms Gate. I've been having an absolute blast. I really do think she is one of the best on Transcendent Heroes, not even remotely close. One of the big reasons why I think she's so damn good is because of the fact that she can actually use a bunch of pay-to-win artifacts, right? That's usually the barrier entry for a lot of players. It's just getting your hands on good pay-to-win artifacts and does the hero use it decently well. Eloise's kit allows her to use AMB, Antlers, Candy Bar, Torch, Crown, that is a lot of artifacts that you can actually make use of. And what we'll be doing in this video is actually taking a look at some of the progress that I've been getting in Sealand. I have been using, of course, a homeowner. She is the homeowner. And I am using the two other shadow heroes that I have on my account, which is the Athalqua and the Ticks, just to add some support. But mainly they're gonna be actually used in as tenants. So they are tenants in the homeowner system, giving the V4 Eloise more stats and she really does perform well here. The enemies in Sealand Shadow are going to be giving you dot damage as well as CC. So they have the ability to twine you. And if you look underneath here, you will see that the enemies have like an Olivia aura underneath them. And what that does is every single time you hit them with anything, uh, it just does a ridiculous amount of reflective damage. You see that we hit ourselves for 6.6 .6 million. Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. So what you can actually do with Eloise is utilize glittery artifacts. So I've had a glittery crown for a while. I've had the, I have a torch as well. And I recently got the second copy for my candy bar when we got that uh, selection chest. So I was able to, I'm able to use those three artifacts and they've actually all had great use cases in CLN. So if you guys are using these free artifacts that they often give us during these events, uh, Eloise is a hero that can make use of a lot of those things. Uh, her ability to reduce the dot with Torch. Uh, the enemies actually have a dot as well. That's how they do a lot of damage. So not only are they causing a bunch of CC to happen, dots to happen, and that reflective damage. There's just damage coming from all angles. And Eloise is just really well tuned for this type of meta because she has a reactive ability that allows her to heal based on the amount of damage she outputs when she counterattacks. So you really have to figure out what you're facing, right? It's, it's very similar to Sealand Abyss, and then you have to tune accordingly. And so I've had a lot of fun. And Lion has proven to be pretty damn useful. Uh, Deer or Lion, both of them are very good. You want to be using, of course, uh, pets that have defensive abilities she's not really that strong offensively so here we're just taking a look at uh sea land 23 as i'm working towards clearing uh sea land 23 of course 23 1 the first stage of every one of the sea lands are going to be the hardest and then you get uh the second one which is not as hard and the third one can sometimes be tricky because when you're facing shadow they're going to be not only doing a lot of dot damage but also reflect damage and on top of that they'll be cc you so you really have to choose uh candy bar when you're facing a lot of twine and torch when you're dealing with a lot of dot damage and you just hope that uh you can purify the sow seed when it happens or you're able to actually just negate that effect by using your natural cc immunity so here you see we're fighting the boss and it's pretty much uh lion's shield is helping a lot to absorb some of that dot damage but when you get twined and locked down you have no chance right it, you, you just get locked in you have no ability to counter attack so you really have to wait for that rng to line up where the so seed doesn't actually proc and you aren't twined so you can actually have a chance to counter attack and heal not only are you going to be healing through those uh attacks you're actually going to be dealing damage of course uh, you eventually need to kill the enemies so it's really nice to have a hero that has a reactive ability that can also make use of all these quirky artifacts that you often don't see in the meta right and it's just it just so happens that shadow is designed with cc with dot so you're always going to be able to find a place to use candy bar an upgraded candy bar as well as a upgraded torch to mitigate a lot of that incoming damage now the bad thing is the reflective kind of olivia shield thing gets applied and your active usually ends up hitting three targets and that's really, really rough, right? When you're ca uh, when you're doing an active into, let's say, um, for the priests, I think the priests, 
one of the the, the ranged heroes uh most of them are gonna have reflective shields we'll see this later but you really have no chance that happens you need to get really lucky because i believe it's random who it applies the shield to so you really have to wait for like the absolute perfect rng where your shields are applied and you do an active and hit three enemies and those three enemies don't have shields or the majority of them don't have shields because when that reflective damage comes back she just instantly dies right as you see there we got twined we got reflective damage it's gg right uh and this is just the footage of the last part of the actual clear for the boss i didn't uh hit record awesome good job Joe. uh yeah i didn't hit record during the actual start of the fight but i'm using deer here uh, i will go through the builds uh, after this so i can showcase what i actually use to clear 23 so people are considering building eloise um and kind of tossing her as a homeowner there is a possibility once you get the right artifacts that you can use her now obviously i've already cleared sea line abyss on my account so i'm far less incentivized to have to you know keep pushing this i'm just doing it with my free attempts every day and if i feel like wasting a couple gems uh, i might use a, a few attempts right now i'm working on 24 one so hopefully i'll be able to bring some of the videos for that it's a uh it, it's pretty messy but see i here i use torched with an hp hp stone and we are just basic enables we're just hoping we don't get twined there's only two enemies that can twine us so it's just your very very tanky enables and i'm going to be using uh uh as well as ticks as my tenants and they're just kind of just tuned for whatever like you have a little bit of attack a little bit of hp that's all going to get added on to uh Eloise's uh stats because of the home system and yeah we're just going over here the paid one artifacts i have six paid one artifacts as well as some frames and nine sets of resonance gear just to give you a rough idea and i think i sh i should be showing yeah the the tenant system yes yeah, so i have ticks carry and ithaqua as my tenants and yep just level 19 level 19 uh for the for the two location three and location four and location one i'm at level nine i've since upgraded a couple times i think i'm at 23 i think from one of the buildings now but Essentially, that's the clear that I got for my Sea Land 23. Hopefully, you guys find that information useful. Uh, I will showcase a little bit of what I'm dealing with right now <laughs> at 24-1. It's really, really tough. So you have to use Candy Bar, like I said, to counter uh, counteract the CC effect. But you guys will see that it's really close right now. I'm just, I think I'm just waiting for the perfect RNG, but I don't know. Like, like, I'm getting really close, but it's like, if this reflective thing, it's like, I can't have attack because then it just reflects back on me. So I just need to get tankier. So I think I need to keep updating the homes so I get more stats, but that comes with attack. So I don't know. There must be a break even point. I'm not too sure. But you see here, I adjusted maker a little bit tankier and uh, we get pretty damn close to actually getting the kill here. And I think with enough iterations of like kind of manipulating the stats on Eloise there should be a point where I could actually get the dub but it's really really tough I'm relying on deer now instead of lion uh lion has a nice active in the sense that the active provides a shield that can absorb dots but the problem is sometimes you need a huge chunk of healing to happen because you're like either hitting unbending will or you're about to hit unbending will and you want to get a big chunk of healing in just so you can survive your own attack it's not necessarily like the enemy's attack that you have to worry about it's the fact that eloise's active hitting three targets really does hurt you here i'm just adjusting all of the uh, the stats that i can possibly adjust on the the supports that i'm using and we get pretty damn close here by using uh, some demon bells. Uh, Glenn is actually pretty damn awesome. Uh, he can actually offset the frontline heroes with a freeze. But this is essentially what I'm dealing with on a daily basis. I'm really trying to get the RNG to line up. So hopefully I can find the clear here. Because once we get the clear, it should be a little bit easier moving forward. There'll be a lot of more tinkering I can do. So that should be super exciting and fun. I'll be doing more tower stuff uh, as it should be opening up later tonight. So I'll bring you that uh, content as well. But... Hopefully you guys found this useful. For the Eloise players out there, there is hope. You guys can push. You don't need the, the Starwing Jar. So we will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Peace.